my name is Ria, and this is my presentation on how public transportation is the, the answer to a lot of our issues in modern day America. Currently, the largest form of transportation is the private car. A typical passenger vehicle emits 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year, which is a massive negative impact on our environment. Um, cars have allowed us to have a lot of travel. It's allowed for cities to expand as much as they have, and it allows individual freedom to go where you want, when you want. But on the flip side, it is really toxic to our environment. Um, it could be improved, and there's really not equal access for everyone. So, America is a very individualist country, which Google defines as a social theory favoring freedom of action for individuals over the collective or state control. And our transportation really shows this. Um, as an individual society, a lot of how our lives are shaped is not really based on how others are living their lives, but instead how each person is living their own life. Um, and so public transportation would require that people make an extra effort to get to and from the drop-off and pick-up points. Um, and adopting to like the general scheduling of those around them. But why is it awesome? Um, public transportation has been cited to help smaller businesses by allowing them to be more accessible, reducing traffic, saving money for individuals, and it, and it encourages healthier habits. Um, as far as the environment goes, it reduces air pollution by a lot, and then it reduces the CO2 emissions. So we can see there's that 30% potential savings here on this graph here um, if we moved to public transportation. And so public transportation is one of the uh, primary ways that those that do not have access to cars get from place to place. However, the public transit we uh, currently have in America is extremely limited and it really doesn't provide equal access. Um, this statistic from 2019 says that 93% of those who ride the bus system are people of color with an average income of 12,000 per year. Uh, having widespread trans transportation would serve everyone and without a larger chunk of the population regularly using public transit, it's not gonna receive the funding and legislation it so desperately needs. So while it serves everyone, um, it makes it so much more accessible um, for those that currently don't have access to um, as widespread of transportation um, to get access. Um, public transportation is an idea we need to be pushing for in our legislation, our budgets, and then our goals as a country. Um, having equal access would alter the United States for the better and in the long term. Uh, public transportation is an ideal that we need to be pushing for because there's major benefits to everyone. There's no traffic, there's accessibility to get from place to place, there's less impact on our environment, and people save money by doing that. This statistic from the American Public Transportation Association says that every 10 million in capital investments in public transportation yields 30 million in increased business sales. So increasing the amount of public transportation would make it a lot more accessible or make businesses a lot more accessible um, and help the economy in that way. Um, traffic is the one thing that Elon Musk considers his greatest weakness. Um, he tweeted in March saying that defeating traffic is the ultimate boss battle. Uh, even the most powerful humans in the world cannot defeat traffic. Uh, this is how a lot of citizens and businesses alike think about transportation. Uh, and a lot of people in the comments were quick to call out a solution, which is using less cars and more public transit. Um, one tweet read that, Correction, we cannot defeat traffic with better cars. We can defeat traffic with smarter land use, better walking, biking, and transit choices, effective pricing mechanisms, and fewer political distractions. All to support the shift to fewer cars and less driving. Uh, and I think that really encap encapsulates a lot of uh, what we are pushing for when we're looking for public transportation. Uh, one example of increased transportation in Albuquerque is the ART bus, which many blaze, uh, for, which many blame for causing increased traffic levels um, and not having much use out of the system. So we're not getting too much profit out of it. However, if more people were able to use the system and were able to decrease the amount of cars used, this would be a really effective system. So I just want to point out another success that we've seen, uh, which is in China. China has built a high-speed rail system. It's the largest rail system in the world. Um, it's planning to expand to 50,000 kilometers by 2025. Um, and many look up to this as one of the greatest examples of a high-speed rail system. 
It's, bought, um, it's been cited to bring rapid growth, a lot of regional tourism to smaller places, and then economic growth as well. Um, and it's been planned for forward thinking, so it's staying sustainable, and they planned it so that it can, uh, there's still room to expand and grow as uh, the country grows. So with all these positives, why haven't we done this yet? Um, there's so much benefit to public transportation, but the couple, a couple of reasons we haven't done it yet is there's a really high upfront cost. Um, before public transportation is usable, it takes a lot of construction, manpower, and money, um, and then as well as time. And then there's some pushback from those that it would not directly impact. Widespread public transportation would first benefit those that live in larger cities rather than those living rurally. So there's a lot of pushback from those that are living rurally because it doesn't really affect them and there is a, a large use of the taxpayer bills for it. Um, and then there is also a massive stigma around public transportation and those that uh, attempt to use it. Breaking that stigma is something that's possible, but it, there's a lot of time and uh, resources needed to do so. Um, and this is something I feel like we should be pushing for most. This is be something uh, we should be looking for in our planning. So um, what can we work off of? So there's already some major successes with public transportation. The first one I wanted to point out is New York City subway system that transfers, transports 4.3 million people daily. Um, the subway system in New York works for people of all walks of life, the rich, poor, and everything in between. Uh, and then another success I wanted to point out is Amtrak. They currently have routes across America. You can go up and down the coast. Uh, you can go from coast to coast. Um, and it's uh, fast public transportation that's pretty cheap to travel on. Um, and this is something that a lot of people don't look at when they're looking to travel, but it's something that we should be working off of a little bit more and adding some more funding. So next I wanna come over, cover some goals. Uh, one of the holdbacks to a train system in America um, is that we do need it to be mostly straight, uh, just uh, based on how the tracks need to be laid. Um, so, just based on how we're laid out here in America, um, it is a little bit difficult, however, um, it would bring a massive impact, and then I wanted to show you the map, the proposed map for it. Um, it covers a lot of the major cities, it goes up and down the coast, from coast to coast, um, and then it covers the major cities like New York, Chicago, we have Denver, Los Angeles, um, and then, of course, Albuquerque is uh, sprinkled in there. The second major goal I have is going to be reducing the stigma around public transportation and encouraging its growth and flourishing. So reducing the stigma around public transportation would mean that everyone is um, feels accessible to take the take public transit. Um, so this would encourage the growth of public transit um, and it would make it more accessible for everyone to take without the fear. And while this is a major, a major goal, um, it is something I believe is possible. And the last goal I have is to make public, uh, make reliable transportation accessible to everyone. Um, so one thing that is a little bit diff uh, difficult about the equity of cars is that it's not always reliable. Those that may not have as much money would have to get a cheaper car that tends to not be reliable. However, having public transit that's reliable, has a set schedule, um, and everyone can take it is something that would be a really big goal and would uh, really help the accessibility of those from, um, that need to get from place to place and don't currently have the access to do so. Um, so just pointing out New York again, um, this is something we see um, pretty commonly in New York. Um, it's uh, pretty reliable to public transportation. It's on a set schedule and um, it's accessible from anywhere in the city. And then just to finish off for today, um, I want to thank you for taking the time to read my presentation or go through my presentation today. I really personally believe that public transit is going to be the next wave, uh, wave of growth here in America. I think it's one of the uh, best next steps we can go um, to move forward. Um, and cars are really just so harmful to the environment. Uh, traffic is no fun. And then um, as far as like city planning goes, I think uh, we can move forward with public transit and make our cities more sustainable and better. And then I just have a couple links here so you could learn more. Um, I have a little bit of information on uh, according to the numbers there. Uh, these are just some of the places that I looked at uh, when I was making this presentation. And then lastly, I have my first work cited page. I'm going to move that up for just a second. 
and then I have my second worksited page.